Cup of Joey, the legend, Stu Finer. Finally getting to meet, finally getting to talk. How are you, my man? Good. Everything's good. Ready to roll. Family's good. Health is good. Uh, I look great. Look at me. And uh, the only person that looks better than me is you, really, because your hair's longer. Yeah, I know. I've been letting this thing grow a little bit, but uh, I've seen the pics back in the day. You had some flow going on. You had oh, some- yeah. Abs- 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. My hair was longer than yours. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That was the way to go back then. So I got to know right off the bat, where does all this Stu Finer energy come from, man? Is it the coffee? Is it just how you've always been? You know, I mean, truthfully, do you want me to talk to your gut level like you're my son type thing? Probably my father telling me that everyone hates Jews. And since I am a Jew, uh, that I'm going to... I didn't perpetuate my race because I married Irish Catholic. So in other words, uh, I think it's having fun because I think someone's going to kill me. Okay. Um, so why and that's my that? life. So every day I try to have as much fun as possible and uh, I don't give a fuck. Absolutely. No, you definitely don't. Um, 100%, <laughs> so you so know, my, my, my enjoyment of life probably, you know, gets in the way of a lot of good things. <laughs> No, I, I tweeted before. No, I, on my own. Like, I like being selfish. So that's me. I've said everybody needs to live like Stu Finer. I've said right. it. Ex- no, no, no. Exactly. You know, it's hard being a living legend. Like, if I was a legend, I'd be dead. Big deal. You know, but I, I can ruin my legacy every day. So I have to, and I try to raise the game. You know, I try to do, I try to live every second like a train's going to run me the fuck over or my heart's going to stop and I'm dying. Because yeah, it could go. happen. Yeah. Because it, could, it literally could happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? People take it for granted. You got to just right. go. I mean, you know, I, no one could ever say, like, if I died at 30, no one could ever say, that fucking guy lived like he was had the best life possible. So, yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm good. So, how do you celebrate the holidays? You're, you're Jewish? You're um, Catholic? What, how do you do? Well, we both? celebrate everything because you just never know. At the pearly gates, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I could talk God into anything, but you never know. Okay. Do you like? So Christmas? I have the Irish Catholic, and we do everything. Yeah, but which the one do you first like? Two, the first two children, I got four children, right? Yeah. Um, the first two were bar mitzvah. The other two were uh, nothing. Okay. We and said, that- we said, we said, we figured out after having two children, when we said to children three and four, um, there is no God, and you have to do something with science, or I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so is there a little divide in the house there? First two are no, kind of like, I, listen. I, you know, I'm a non-practicing Jew. What I feel is that I love everyone. I'm going to do the best for everyone. I'm going to give literally the shirt off my back to everyone. I don't give a flying fuck. Even people that fuck me, that's how I'm going to live because I don't give a. I, that that's the best way to live. You what? can't. You know. You know what I'm saying? I get enjoyment out of giving to others and watching their enjoyment. Were you always like that, or do you have yeah, always like people please people? Well, again, if you th- if if your father teaches you that people hate you, then you better make them like you. So I'm a good people pleaser. Gotcha. Okay. How many you cups of coffee do you drink today? How many cups Say of coffee do you drink a day? Um, ten. Ten a day, and and like six diet snapples, and then uh, probably literally easy 150, 200 ounces of water. Do you get jittery at all? I, I if I have like no, food, never. Coffee. Like like literally never. Man. Like I could snort an eight ball right now in front of you, and I'm not getting jittery. Did you have a cocaine phase? Not really. No. Like in other words, when it was there, I hit it really fucking hard. My brother sold it when in his teens and twenties and hung out with really bad people and had to carry guns and Dolman pinchers and just like, I that scared the fuck out of me. Truth be told. My buddy in, I was in 11th grade. He was a year older in 12th and he was selling Coke and he got arrested and he went away for two years in jail and that sobered up Farmingdale and everybody who ever met him. Do you know what I mean? Like, so in other words, I was scared shit. So when I did it, it's fun, but uh, you know what it makes me do? Be honest, eat faster. So what the fuck's the point? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, li- I mean, literally, you know, well, what does cocaine do for you? Do? I-, I eat faster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, I don't fuck any better. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not smarter, but I, it's fun, you know, but no, definitely not. That scared the fuck out of me. So truth be told, no. You don't strike me as a weed guy at all either. You're too, you're too jacked no, up. No, I'm stoned every day. I'm really, I'm 20 bowl packs a day. 
I'm in, hitting, in your... I, I, I put little buds and I smoke like 20 hits a day minimum. Yeah, I love my marijuana. Since late 70s. The only time I stopped smoking pot was 1988 to 1995. I was cold sober on everything, everything. Um, because we, we came back from uh, our honeymoon, me and Sandy from Italy. And uh, we said, we're never having kids. Let's just party. And then, of course, she was pregnant already. <laughs> so she says to me, I don't want you to raise the kids stone. So my first three, I was, my first two, I was able to get away with it. My third was born. So from 1980 to 1995, I was cold sober. And then uh, my buddies came over with, with hash. And then we rented a plane, went to Atlantic City. It was a great, we won like 75,000. It was a pretty good trip. I bought, I took my wife's engagement ring while she was in the hospital and upgraded it. So she's got like $150,000 ring because of that money one. So I didn't piss away one cent. First time in my life and only time. You know, let's say I have a thousand gambling stories. I have 990 losers. I have 10 really good winners. You know what I mean? Like that's how it goes. That's a really good winner. Yeah, because things could have gone really badly. But there. I love smoking pot. You, nobody loves smoking pot more than me. No one can smoke me under the table. I could smoke every day, twice on Sunday, bongs, blunts, anything. It's insane. So my question then becomes, what is Stu Finer like when he's not mellowed out by marijuana? Um, I like to exercise then. I would like to run. I like running. I, I started walking because I, I didn't want to hurt myself running. You know, you could hurt your groin, you could hurt your knees, you know, you start running. No. Um, but uh, I exercise a lot when I'm, when I'm straight, then I'm exercising. I'm running, I'm walking 40 miles a week. I'm running 40 miles a week. So was your wife in the hospital because of a kid or was something more fucked up and you just took a ring? No, that was my third child, Ryan. <laughs> he was born on February 10th and we went that night. And I played, uh, I just pressed the number 10. And it was like the first bet was 200. We won 7,000. Then the next bet was like, we won 24,000 because I surrounded it. And then the next bet was like 40,000. And then we walked. We got back on the plane. Fuck you. Let's go. Done. What a we, didn't e we didn't even lose a lot of money on the, the role that we lost before we left. Obviously, we had a losing role. That's when we got on the plane. But we didn't press that one. We did, we did amazing. So you knocked her up on the honeymoon, though. I mean, um, well, honey my first we're talking. My first we knocked up on the honeymoon. Yeah, we went to Italy for two weeks and then a cruise for two weeks. We had three hundred and twenty-five uh, people at the wedding. It was seventy-five thousand for the wedding and fifty thousand on the honeymoon. One hundred twenty-five grand in nineteen eighty-eight. <laughs> Oh my God, that makes my wedding a couple of years ago seem like, I mean, you know, 20. No, I, freaking I've out. been making a quarter of a million dollars a year since I'm 20. That's a All long time. Gambling. And, I'm, um, well, let's see. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yes. When, when, when I quote that number, yes. Did you get since any, uh, did you what? get any from the movie with Pacino? Or did you get a cut of that? No. No, but I'm able to use forever that Al Pacino played me and they, and Jim Robinson of Morgan Creek production. Yeah. Uh, he owns it. He called me and I had to sign and spoke to me. We spoke on the phone and he, I had to sign off rights for them to use the sports advisors in that movie so that I wouldn't sue him. Gotcha. So, did you so get in other words, but, uh, no, uh, but in other words, I did not make one cent, but I've made millions of dollars promoting myself off of it. Like in other words, Al Pacino played me, Rene Russo played my wife, Matthew McConaughey played a disgruntled employee who worked for me, Amanda Sante played a prototypical customer that we lost for and, you know, he, we had no idea and he chased, you know, that type of thing. So okay. in other words, 25% of the movie was real, 75 was horseshit. But that's how it went. But it was still Al Pacino, Rene Russo, Matthew McConaughey, Amon Sante, Jeremy Piven. I mean, you know, it Ailey. was an you know, it was right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's so, um did you get to talk to Pacino at all? No, I didn't talk to anybody with the movie because the person that like in other words, it's a disgruntled employee standpoint working for me. So Brandon was able to, as a caddy on the Riviera Country Club, he worked for me, yeah. went on a horrific losing streak for nine months, and he made me so much money that we let him destroy people for nine months. When I once made the move, I, I then took away him picking the games because he was so bad. So then my brother-in-law picked the games, and, Brand, and then I cut his pay, and Brandon said, fuck you, I'm leaving. 
And literally that's how it went. He wrote me a letter, he gave me back a wristwatch, you know, so, I mean, that part was real and then the rest was nonsense. Like the, the restaurant they depict there was Nanny Il Valletta, 61st between Lex and Park. I picked up a fucking drop dead gorgeous 10 for him. You know, like if I wasn't married, I would have fucked the girl because she wanted to fuck me, but I got him to fuck Brandon. Yeah. And uh, very nice of you. You know, that. <laughs> thank you. Exactly. Listen, I'm hospitable, you know, and I don't have a prenup. And I would live in a cardboard box if, you know, if need, if she ever wanted to fucking hammer me. And, you know, and she has the ammo too. But yeah. 30, 38 years, you know, she lives angry, but she's the fucking best. Yeah, no, I but love Yeah, so in other words, um, but the movie has made me in a lot of areas. I mean, how many people could say that Al Pacino played them in a movie, you know? You know what I'm saying? It's like I mean, insane. No, and, and it was it was fucking great. Like I, like they had on my sports advisor show, it was Al Pacino, it was Matthew McConaughey and Jeremy Pivot. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Who would have thought? 17-year-old Stu Finer, you know? Exactly. In movie magic. Exactly. Again, real. What? Um, this is gonna sound like a weird question, probably. But yeah. have you have you ever been to uh, like you know, with your kids and your wife? Did you ever go to like a parent teacher conference? Did you ever get into a you know a teacher's ass for uh, you know being a dick to your kid? I feel like you would just raise hell there. No, you know something. My kids, by the grace of God, um, have my wife's brain, so they're all really smart. Nice. So we never had real problems there. You know, like a couple of times I went over, you know, whatever, like normal stuff. But um, normally it would be if I didn't like, uh, let's say the way my, the coach was playing my kid, uh, then I could be that motherfucking asshole. You were the sports dad while, while the yeah, school was okay. Right, right, like one of my kids didn't make, didn't make the team. And I called him up, I go, listen, in PAL, he's smoking these fucking kids. And he literally said to me, well, he ain't fucking smoking them now. I'm like, okay. You know, I didn't threaten his life and say, I'm going to fuck your mother. But, you know, I, you know, I had to humble myself and I love the guy, to be honest, you know, but, uh, you know, like I was that asshole. I wasn't an asshole with the, the parent teachers, but we went to all the conferences by the grace of God, because of what I do. Do you realize something? I made lunch for all my kids, all my four sons. I made lunch for them until they told me don't make lunch in ninth, 10th grade. There you From go. Kindergarten to 10th grade. I picked them up from school. Okay. I went on these trips. I went to, you know, the, you know, Twin Towers. I went to all the zoos. I went to the museums, you know, by the grace of God, I was able to do that, you know, quality time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, so in yeah. other words, I cost myself millions cause I wasn't like whoring out or running a boiler operation or making yeah. money to make money to make money. I was, I made enough money to pay the bills and certain times I didn't even make enough money to pay the bills, you know, and certain times I scored out, but, um, I was able to spend all the time with my kids and I was able to coach my first three in everything. And then my fourth, I was able to coach everything when he was five. And then my wife looked at me and she said, we're not making enough money, you scumbag, get back to fucking work. Threatened me and then from my fourth kid at six years old forward, he, other people coached him. You had to make some decisions. But I coached my first three in baseball, football, basketball, soccer. So you would be a legendary coach. I mean. Oh. Well, I said to the kids, you know, I said, listen, kids who suck, guys, you never play. Let me just tell you that right now, but you can't fucking hate me. You're going to swim in my pool. I'm going to have popcorn, cotton candy, ice cream. I got a fucking $2 million house. You're going to be on my pirate ship, my ball bath, my fucking two trampolines. Okay. Yeah. Swimming in my fucking 20 to 60 in the ground, concrete pool, men's bathroom, men's shower, women's bathroom, women's shower, 2.6 acre estate. And they were, and the parents were like, no promise. No <laughs> So you were bribing the parents. No oh, issue. You sucked. I only played my best kids. I, I went to win. Listen, I won soccer championships playing it like it's football, not knowing a motherfucking thing about soccer. I couldn't teach a kid how to kick a ball, but we played it like football. I'm like, listen, I know nothing about this sport, but just knock this person over. Get yeah. in his face. Don't worry about the penalty. Steal the ball. Be aggressive. So, yeah, I was a, people love me. That's the movie I want to see. Is, I bought uh, toys for people at KB Sports and these other things. Like I bring, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of toys to the game. So the kids who hated me because they never played and the parents who really hated me and wished I was dead like I was in Nazi Germany and they gassed me. You know, those people, but their kid loved me because I did bring toys. What Did you ever, you know, feel like you might run into some trouble bringing little kids toys or was that never a factor? 
What do you mean? I, I, I brought them right to the fucking field. Like practice would be at six and I'd fucking have two bags of $200 worth of fucking toys and I'd give them out to everyone. You're saying, you know, you know, yeah, exactly. I did it right in front. I did it open house. What, do, do I look like a pedophile to you? I'm going to knock you out when I fucking meet you the first time. You're going down. You better be able to take a punch, you scumbag. That's the movie I want to see is Coach exactly. Stu. Not the gambling one. I want to see oh. Coach Stu coaching oh. Little League kids. You have to talk to my kids. My kids That's a comedy. Them. That's My a kids comedy. have so many stories. So, uh, beyond stories. The first, the first Barstool Sports uh, movie or, or whatever, oh, the Stu Finer coach. I'm in. It would work because I should have never been allowed to coach. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm giving people games for $100,000, and then I'm running to the field in a suit at 6.30 after I did my TV show, and I'm coaching PAL basketball at like six years old, like it's the world, like it's the NBA championship. I'm yeah. screaming, steal the ball! He can't dribble! Steal the ball! Like I'm literally influencing the game like a scumbag yelling at a six-year-old who's mortified. <laughs> so the dads, like, had, they, the dads had to be coming to you for their picks, though, right? And they're looking, you're, they're no, giving they you never, their cards. You know, I never gave picks to them. You know, I really didn't. I think then, you know, I just said, you know, the people that I met didn't have money. And I said, gambling is for the rich to lose money. You're not rich and you sure as fuck can't lose money. So I never pitched it to them. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. especially like if I'm, if I'm hanging out with people every day, I'm going to tell them how it is. You're not going to win money gambling. No one wins money gambling. People who say they win money gambling are liars in addition to losers. Gambling is for the rich to have an amazing time, an amazing life, have fun, lose money. If everybody took a zero off what they bet, the world would be a better place. And if you took two zeros, that would even be better. Because okay. why get in trouble? You love the action. You love the thrill. It's so much fun. You're a manager. You're controlling the best players in the world with, you know, the fantasy now. You do everything. And in other words, but the problem becomes is that it's something that the rich do to have fun and lose money. That's the premise of gambling, any sort of gambling. No one wins. You know, no right, it's one gambling wins. and not investing, right? Never, never. Yeah. yeah. You know, you could take a shot and make money, but you're going to give it back tenfold, you know, not even onefold. If, you know, if you only lost a little, what's the big deal? But most people get destroyed. You know, you could catch me on a streak. I've won 36 in a row. You know, I mean, you catch Stu Fun on a hot streak and, and you start pressing, you know, you could fucking change your life. You could also catch me cold in the reality of gambling hits you in the face. Right. Are you more of a Vegas guy? Do you like Vegas or is that no for you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I love yeah. Vegas. Okay. Were you more Vegas or Atlantic City or would, do you have a preference? Oh, but 10 times, 100 times more AC because it's accessible. Since right. 1982, the minute that I became 21 and I could go there, you know, the Playboy Hotel was the hot one. Then. It was crazy. Everybody was in Playboy bunny outfits and they were all tens, you know what I'm saying? Tens. Then you could get away with, you know, body shaming and you could fucking, you know, not only are you fucking the girls then, these people, but they were tens, you know what I'm saying? That's, you know, but whatever. And everybody got away with, but uh, Atlantic City, yeah. Because Vegas, because I'm always working. I've been working since 1980. You know, I'm in action. I'm servicing games. Even when I go on vacation, it's never like I'm not servicing games, you know. Right. Yeah, no, you don't have any days off for sure. Right, uh, exactly. Who... Who fucks more, you or Dave Portnoy? Portnoy. Yeah. In, you know, Portnoy, I mean, listen, if Dave Portnoy ain't fucking everything that walks, who is? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, listen, I give him a hard time, right? Yeah. And, uh, but who fucks more than him? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I and when we've seen I, little pieces of him, you know, the when he wants to drop a sex tape and then go, oh, I don't know what it is. It's an FBI. Did you see it? That's a felony. You know, that so weak, Dave. Dave, you're so strong in every other area, but that's as weak as you can get. When he says that, that's that's his comeback. Um, you know, he can fuck. I mean, he fucks like a fucking king. You know, like so. Yeah. I would say he's tenfold to me. But the question you're asking is me. Um, 20 me 16 17 and dave 16 17 he's sucking my dick you know what i'm saying you know that's you want to go talk real <laughs> it's been a long time been with the same girl since 38 you know 38 years we're going back john yeah is that uh is that tough for you i mean because you're you're the fuck no man, so. you fuck, listen she's given me four healthy sons think about that 
Yeah. You know, even if she was the worst person possible and she's the best person possible, she's given me four sons. So okay. that's amazing. She's a great mother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, she really cares. Does, I'm, I'm curious, who films you when you do your videos? Is it your sons? Is it, is it yes, my, well, no, it's only one person. It's my son, Alex. Okay. Gotcha. Right. He's going to be 30 years old. Okay. I didn't know because, uh, I, you know, my wife, I, I do a lot of videos as well, obviously. And so sometimes my wife's like, we well, just shut the fuck up. So I didn't know if Sandy was like, or Mrs. Finer. Sorry, I don't want to be disrespectful. No, Sandy's fine. Sandy's perfect. Sandy's <laughs> I didn't you're know part if of the family. Was... Joe, you're family. You come in my kitchen, you could drink my milk from the fucking uh, refrigerator. Well, that means a lot because honestly. I mean, so- come on. You're from I'm... Indiana. If you can't trust someone from Indiana, who can you ever trust? Yeah. I mean, let's be real. You know what I'm saying? No, I appreciate that. Because honestly, I was always kind of uh, intimidated by you until you messaged me at first. I was like, fuck, Stu, Stu would, he would get on my ass, man. No, I need more Stu stuff. I mean, listen, you, you categorize me with a lisp, which other people have in the past. So it's not like you're the originator. It's so weird, but I don't hear the lisp in myself. Yeah. That's the craziest part. But my oldest son, even 15 years ago, they were always like saying they're making fun of your dad that you have a lisp. Oh my God, I, I can't hear the list though. But uh, I, we need 10, 20, 100 times more stew stuff. Why waste your time on, you know, Sabin and, you know, like, uh, in other words, Mahomes and, you know, like, you know, <laughs> let's go right to the top, me, moi, and let's go. Every, you know, you could be as deprecating, you could destroy me. I love it. Yeah, I no, can I, take it. You know what I'm saying? I, that's what I'm saying. You, I, I know you can. And that's why I right. love to do it on Thanksgiving. It's hilarious. You're always, I mean, I watch you work video. it in and then send me a check. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's basically how it, you know, I mean, that's how I roll. I just, so you know where it's coming from and, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. that's how you're ready to roll. No, I, I mean, it, uh, we watch sports advisor. Well, I watch, it's kind of funny cause my, okay. So I'll be real with you. My wife, God love her. She has kind of a love hate relationship with you. She loves you. She thinks you're hysterical. She loves how good you are to me. But sometimes I'll put on sports advisors or it'll be like nine in the morning and I'll be watching your videos cracking up and she'll be sleeping and she'll be like, <laughs> Can you shut Stu up for a second? <laughs> so That's amazing. Uh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So it's, you know, she, she loves everything about you. But then those times sometimes where we're getting the ready to roll, she's just like, it's a little early for Stu, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, listen, Stu, I can't wait to get out there to the East Coast. And you said you'd come here. So I'm waiting on maybe you coming to. I in- would. I mean, not right this second. We're still in a COVID area. All our restaurants are closed. We, that's it. Um, but um, as far as uh, coming to you, 100%. Also, my friend lives in Indiana. So I will see you and then see him. Yeah. I've never seen him. One we'll of my up. best friends in my wedding party. Yeah. Let's and uh, he moved to Indiana maybe 20 years ago. He worked on a stationary gambling boat. That was his first, because he was in, uh, he was in the uh, offshoreman. And then uh, he was the guy, the maintenance man on this stationary boat, but it was gambling. Somehow it, was, it never left pier, but you were allowed to gamble on it. You know, most of the time you got to go three miles out or whatever. Yeah. So, and then it, it eventually went out. So that's what he does. So he's oh. like a merchant marine. Yeah, let's double up there. We'll do that. When I come out to the East Coast, obviously, you offer Oh, no. Listen, absolutely. A hundred percent. Now, do you smoke Do you smoke pot? Uh, I, I got really bad anxiety and paranoia, so I kind of stay away. I'm oh, than- no. So that's the worst, right? Like, yeah, my sons don't love it either. You know, one of them does, but most of them don't because they say when they smoke it, they have to sit in their room. Yeah. I like get they all- ate too many edibles and they almost lost their minds, they said. <laughs> I get all weird. I bet I'd be fine with you, but I'm more of a drinker. I like to I right. like the- so yeah, what, what is your drug of choice? My drug of choice or my drink? No, I mean drinking, you know. Drinking. Um, man, I, I really, I mean, uh, I, I like uh, some bourbon. I like uh, bourbon. straight up beer, so, uh, okay. wine, big wine, you know, give me some red wine, even though it okay. fills my acid reflex, but I love wine. Oh, yeah, that burns, no? Golly, man, it's terrible. Right. But I drink Tastes it. great on the way in and horrible on the way out. I got Tums right next to me. I'm down. I'm like, it's, that's my fucking drug is Tums. Right. You know what okay. I mean? it, it, and it, now you have, no, you have no children though, right? Nope. No kids yet. Okay. Nope. So, and how old is your wife? 25. Well, she'll oh, be 25 and, in January. So. Oh, okay. And then so, and she from Indiana too? Uh-huh. Yep. Everybody oh, okay. Out here, you know, went to, went to Purdue and, and did that whole thing. So. Oh, really? That's where you went to college? That's where she went. Oh, okay. Where did you go? I went to the University of Indianapolis. Little oh, okay. School, D2 school, but 
Yeah, I got myself a cheerleader, Stu. She was a cheerleader at Purdue, so. Really? I'm, I'm rolling, yeah. Wow, that's like winning the lottery. Yeah, I never would have thought, you know, all these things that happen and shit. And Purdue's an amazing Purdue. school, too. It is, yeah, I love Purdue. And she now, did you play sports? I mean, growing up, but I didn't in college. No, okay, not in high school or college. Well, high school, yeah, but college. What'd you play in high school? Uh, all three, football, basketball, baseball. So. Oh, really? Yep, yep, yep. What was your best sport? Probably baseball. I don't know. I liked football the most, um, but yeah, you know, I was just an okay athlete. You know. Okay. So good enough. How to be tall? How tall are you? About six foot. Oh, you're six foot. Okay. Yeah, Fun you look tall. Day. So. And then, and then, how much do you weigh? In high school, it was like 185. Now it's like 205. You know. 205. Okay. That male, you know, the grown man weight. I like to call it. So. Now, do you exercise? Do you run? Do you do anything with weights or nothing? Yeah, I go through spurts, you know, when I'm trying to lose a chubby face, as I call it, I'll, I'll hit it pretty hard and, you know, get, get thin, thinner, but I haven't for a little bit. I'm, I'm a lazy piece well, of shit. Well, 185 to 205, I, listen, that's what I weigh, and I'm 5'4 and 3 quarters, so you look amazing. You look oh, like, a, you, compared to me, you look like a god. I'm thanks. like a hobbit, and you look like Zeus. No, I want to go that far, man. I, you, you haven't seen me with my shirt off, but. Uh, right. No, no I, listen, it's okay. My face is looking thinner, but uh, right. hey, I was I was just you know being nice to you. You do look fat. <laughs> no, you are fat. Look at I mean I, mean, I know. Look right? at yourself. Yeah. Right, your cheek. You you look Chinese. Your cheeks make you come up here. <laughs> Stu, thanks for the time, man. I can't. I wait love to you. you. Thank you. Yeah. It's an honor. You. You're you're listen. You're great at everything you do. You really are. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I love ventriloquist. I love that you have that skill set because that's a talent. That's like being able to sing or dance, you know, pick winners, you know, like that's a skill set what you do. And, uh, you know, point zero zero one of the world can do what you do. You know what I'm saying? They can't be taught it. It's either inherent. I don't know how you figured it out. How, how did you know that you could do that? I just, just thought to make, you know, like, to make people laugh, you all of a sudden came out with it and like, wow, that was good. And you were able to do yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in a house with my, you know, uh, my dad and then like my grandpa and uncle, when we'd be around, we, they loved, uh, they loved SNL and things like that and everything, you know, so I, you know, the Dana Carvey's, the, the, the Jimmy Fallon's of the world. I was always like, oh, that's, that's awesome. They could do those characters. And so I just started doing some when I was younger and then it just kind of worked out. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. We no, love I, you. You know, my, my kids, I never even heard of you. And then my kids said, this guy's the best there. And I'm going, I'm like, what do you mean? I don't even know who the fuck that is. And then I went to it and I'm like, wow, this guy's great. Thank you. That means so much. I love you too. I can't wait to meet and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Very good. Love you.